I've been at the Letterman Show since 1991, and that's 18 years. And I would say during that time, the comedic sensibility of the show has changed, I want to say, half a dozen times. Because Dave has gotten older, but the average age of the average writer has stayed the same. So they bring in their sensibilities and what they think is funny, and they try and interject it in the show. And so the show's comedic sensibility uh, changes. And it's, it's all valid. And we don't write anything and think, oh, I need to write this joke to appeal to the crucial male 18 to 34 demographic. We don't think like that. I, I, at least I don't. I just think, what's the funniest take that, that I can do. And sometimes uh, I, I think that things have passed me by just because I'm older and the people watching uh, are, are younger. Sometimes I think that. But funny is funny is funny. And uh, if you show somebody a Marx Brothers movie who's never seen one, I think that they'll think it's funny. And I don't think that they're going to ask, why isn't Groucho naked? You know, I want to see Groucho's deal. Late night has really changed in the last, um, I think in the last uh, three decades, let's say. I think that, uh, first of all, there's, there's more variety and there's more competition. You know, before 1982, there was Johnny and... Uh, Johnny Carson and people that he knocked off. So all of late night was just, was Carson. And it was a monologue. It was some sort of body, broad comedy aimed at people over 30, clearly. Um, and uh, white people over, and white men over, over 30. And... Um, so that was it, and then uh, Dave came along in 1982, and NBC gave Dave Letterman one directive. Uh, whatever you do, we want it not to be The Tonight Show. So we want a three-joke monologue, not a 25-joke monologue. Uh, we want, you know, we just don't want it to look like The Tonight Show. So given that go-ahead, it was very uh, free-flowing, it was irony based, uh, and it was uh, the old producer Bob Morton used to say, uh, "Late Night with David Letterman." It celebrated failure. It was not slick. It was very uh, anarchistic, and um, so that was so. So then that comes along. Then uh, you have Dave moving to CBS, eleven thirty, and you have this situation with Jay where uh, you had uh, one show uh, that was uh, host-driven, which is Dave, and, and uh, material-driven, um, more, I would say more concept-driven. And then you had another show, which is Jay, who was just essentially just a comic who got his own show, and it's monologue and guests, and a little more... Uh, uh, traditional. And then you had the 1230 shows with Conan and all of a sudden they were, uh, David started this with going after younger audiences. I mean, people always say I started watching Dave in college and uh, so there was a real market out there. And then, like I mentioned before, late night became this very lucrative um, uh, industry for the networks. Very cheap to produce, very, and of course, uh, once uh, commercialism, once people start making money, it's going to tend to get watered down, and it's not going to be as uh, it's not going to be as fearless um, because there's a lot of people that depend their livelihoods depend on your success. So it's not just kids screwing around anymore. And then what happened in I would say the late '90s. Uh, is that the other the, the cable emerged as a late night force with the Daily Show and Colbert, and 
it was much more topical. Not that the Letterman show, we, we always took care of what was in the news and so did Jay, but it, it became uh, more of uh, the, the topical stuff. It became more topical and more issue oriented. And, and I think we've certainly gone in that direction at The Late Show. And so that's the evolution of that. Now, I think that if I was to predict, and, and believe me, I'm always wrong, so put your money elsewhere. I think we're going to reach a critical mass with the, the topicality thing and people getting their news because I think it's going to get a little too partisan and I think that uh, late night shows are going to be put in uh, a situation uh, that they shouldn't be put in, uh, you know, unbeknownst to them. And I think it's probably going to go back to a little sillier and um, uh, a little uh, less uh, celebrity driven and, um, and, and kind of easier to take and less faux serious. You look at a guy like Craig Ferguson and watch what he's doing. He, nobody is doing what he's doing. And, and I think, he'll, I think he'll, he will emerge because he is silly. It's all him. You know, uh, you know, the guests don't really have to say anything. He's going to take care of it. And I think that, um, I think that that's where we're going. I don't think that uh, Johnny uh, ever dreamed that he would influence uh, an election. Um, you know, he, uh, he never talked about Watergate when Watergate was going on. He talked about it after the fact. Uh, but, uh, you know, Tina Fey had as much to do with the last election as, uh, as Dave did with the situation with McCain, as The Daily Show uh, does. So, uh, you know, Look where that is. I mean, that's where we are. Where these shows, and, and 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 none of these shows set out to influence elections, but that's what happens. They're they're right in the the popular culture. And you know, I never bought all those uh, um, studies and surveys about people getting their news from late night television. I and I still don't. But I think that people uh, turn to late night television. Um, to see what the point of view is on the news. I think they know going in. I don't think we're in the education business. Here's the deal with society. People fall in love with the idea of things rather than the reality of things. And that holds true for late night. You know, it's, it's so much uh, more provocative and sexier to say that people are watching our show and getting their news from Dave Letterman. And let me tell you, as somebody that writes monologue jokes and somebody that knows Dave, I, I, I'm telling you, we, we find that very funny.